Hello, my name is Charity Rissler-Wattridge, and welcome to another video. Today, I just wanted to do a short video and discuss what did cult leader William Branham believe about depression and mental illness. From the research that I have done, it doesn't seem like he brought up mental illness very often. And if you know of more times when he brought up mental illness, do leave a comment in the description with the quotes. Um, but I have one in particular where he brings up mental illness and I would like to share what he says about it. When Branham's sermon, The Laodicean in Church Age, he says the following. God says this church of the Laodicean age is wretched. That word comes from two Greek words, which mean endure and trial. And it has nothing to do with the trials that come to a true Christian. For God describes a Christian in trial as blessed and his attitude one of joy. Whereas this description is phrased as wretched and miserable. How strange. In this age of plenty, in this age of progress, in this age of abundance, how can there be trials? Well, now, it is strange, but in this age of plenty and opportunity, when everyone has so much and there is so much more to be had, what with all the inventions to do our work and so many things to give us pleasure, suddenly, that's <laughs> listed on his quote in all caps, so I assume that there was emphasis on that word, Suddenly, we find mental illness taking such a toll as to alarm the nation when everyone ought to be happy with really nothing to be unhappy about. Millions are taking sedatives at night, pet pills in the morning, rushing to doctors, entering institutions, and trying to drown out unknown fears by alcohol. Yes, this age boasts of its tremendous stores of worldly goods, but the people are less happy than ever. This age boasts of its spiritual attainments, but the people are less sure of themselves than ever. This age boasts of better moral values and is more corrupt than any age since the flood. It talks about its knowledge and science, but it is fighting a losing battle in all fields. For the human mind and soul and spirit cannot comprehend or keep abreast with the changes that have come upon the earth. In one generation, we have gone all the way from the horse and buggy age to the space age, and we are proud and boastful about it. But inside is a dark void cavern that is crying out in torment. And without a known reason, men's hearts are failing for fear, and the world is so darkened that this age could well be called the age of neurotics. It boasts, but it cannot back it up. It cries peace, and there is no peace. It cries that it is, has a great amplitude of all things, but it keeps burning with desire like an unsatisfied fire. There's no peace, save my God, to the wicked. So that's the quote. That's what he said. And I'll uh, link that as well so you can read through it. But something that I think is interesting to point out out of this one quote talking about mental illness is the fact that it seems that he is saying that a Christian should not have mental illness, should not be depressed. If we look at that again, a few different lines in there, he says that the Laodicean age is described as wretched, but it has nothing to do with the trials that come to a true Christian. For God describes a Christian in trial as blessed, and his attitude one of joy. <sighs> now I read that and knowing my Bible a little bit better than I did um, years ago, I am immediately like, where are you getting that in scripture? Because that's, um, that's not accurate to what God describes um, a Christian's trials to be. We're not actually guaranteed sunshine and roses. We're not actually guaranteed that we won't have mental health problems. And as for it suddenly, mental illness, as for mental illness suddenly taking over, um, we have evidence in scripture of people probably having some forms of mental illness. And mental illness has been along, around a long time. I mean, it's something that I think we're being able to understand a little bit better um, more recently in recent times. I don't think there was something that was suddenly taking over. I think that um, what Branham was seeing was 
suddenly there were more terms for for things for mental illness and um, people were actually starting to get treatment and studies were actually being done based on this very limited the very limited resources we have it seems like he's saying people at least with depression are not true christians because they should be enduring childs with joy and um to be considered blessed. And so if they are depressed and they are taking pills, um, then they're maybe not a true Christian. Now, do I think this is a biblical take? Absolutely not. I don't think that's a biblical take. In fact, if we look in scripture, I'm just going to point out a few different verses for you. Um, One is Isaiah 53, three to five. I'm reading in the ESV. He was despised and rejected by men. Now, to clarify, this is talking about Jesus. This is a prophecy about Jesus. He was despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And as one from whom men hide their faces, he was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the chastisement that brought us peace. And with his wounds, we are healed. I think that's a beautiful verse um, prophesying about what Jesus would do for us in the future. And that has, praise God, come to pass. But within that verse, it talks about him being despised, rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Jesus himself had very negative emotions. Those emotions were not sinful and those emotions did not separate him from from God. So how can we say that a Christian shouldn't be having sorrows or shouldn't be depressed when even Jesus had negative emotions? Negative emotions by themselves are not something that biblically separate us from God. In fact, I'll take it one step further. Psalm 34, 18 to 19 says, The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. So is Branham's view of mental illness biblical? Is it true that somebody who is a Christian should be receiving those trials as with joy and blessed? Well, yes, we should be rejoicing in our sufferings, but that's not always the case. And the Bible says that Jesus is going to be close to us in in the midst of our brokenheartedness. God is acquainted. Jesus is acquainted with sorrows. He sees our broken hearts and he is near to the crushed in spirit. That's biblical. So if you have depression, hey, great news that doesn't disqualify you from the love of God. Romans 8 35 to 39 says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are regarded as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm sure that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Isn't that amazing? That is That is um, God's nature to us, despite whether we are depressed or not. And praise God for that, because I've struggled with depression at multiple times in my life. And um, even recently, throughout pregnancy, I've been struggling with depression. It's been ebbing and flowing. And thankfully, recently, I've I've received a lot of relief. Um, But I've also seen God working through that and being present with me throughout the depression Um, while I've been struggling with that. And I think that's amazing. And it's a testament to God's grace and the way that he cares for us, even in the midst of deep, dark emotions. Um, Praise God for that. And um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video of uh, what cult leader William Branham thought about mental illness. 
um, particularly depression. And again, if you have any other quotes where Brandon was talking about mental illness, I'm very fascinated by that. Would love to hear them. Please drop them in the comments and uh, give this video a like if you enjoyed. And, um, you know, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And that's all I have for you today. So I'll uh, see you next time.